What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay, my journey to 10,000 live listings. Today, I have an awesome guest, and I'll let him introduce himself. But we're here to really learn about how to stay healthy as a stay-at-home entrepreneur today. So let me introduce you to my guest, Chris Bonafide Hustler. Why don't you give us a little bit of an intro and tell us about you. What's up, guys? My name is Chris. I also go by The Bonafide Hustler on YouTube. Uh, I've been in the reselling game for about 12 years now. Um, I buy and resell stuff I find from garage sales, estate sales, yard sales, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, big box stores, and I put it on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth, and consignment stores in town. Uh, I do it part-time. Uh, the other side of the time, I'm working on the Green Room University, which is another one of my online businesses, and I also run uh, another YouTube page called Bod Dam. So, both those links should be down below. But yeah, my primary page on YouTube is The Bonafide Hustler, and that's pretty much how most people would know me. Awesome. So I'm so happy that you could make it because I've seen, I've seen a lot of resellers, met a lot of resellers in person. It seems like a lot of them are out of shape, and you know um, you're basically a amalgamation of your habits. So I just wanted to ask you a little bit about how you stay fit because you, I heard in one of your videos you were saying how there was no there was never a fat bona fide hustler. Like you've always been keeping up with your health and um, I, or maybe you can speak to that a little bit on just your lifestyle or your commitment to staying healthy. I've never been like a really overweight or fat bona fide hustler. Um, I like to always say like, there's no before and after with my life. It's just a bunch of befores, you know, it's a bunch of before pictures, <laughs> just always befores. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I've always sticked with, I've stuck with it since, um, middle school, child, high school, whatever. I've always been fit. And uh, I think it comes down to good parenting, honestly. Like my parents were just real big on like, hey, let's make sure the kids are always biking and outside and give them a good life. And uh, we, were, we weren't much of, more, much of the video game kind of kid thing in the 80s. You know, like uh, that's when Nintendo was like, real big and people were starting to stay at home. And like I grew up in, a, in, a, in uh, an era where cell phones weren't really prominent either. So people were really like talking to each other and you know, uh, playing outside with your friends was actually a really cool thing to do. And now, nowadays, it's it just seems like uh, people are very sedentary. And um, especially with the reselling thing too, which is kind of interesting, um, you know, while it is a stay-at-home kind of business, like a lot of people that I've met through reselling could definitely uh, benefit from being fit, like uh, Chris had said. And it's just, um, it's, an, it's an opportunity for a lot of people to at least be inspired by people like me and others in the space that seem to have had, you know, have figured out the fitness thing. But uh, that's essentially who I am. You know, I, I, I wish I could be, I wish I could have some, you know, overweight and fat pictures of myself, but I don't like, I just, uh, I stuck with it and I know what the benefit is, is of it. And um, it's just a fantastic thing to have. I think it's a gift and it's one of those gifts that I think as of recently, I really started to share with people on YouTube. So, can we talk a little bit about maybe some morning habits or things that you do every day? Because I feel like it's it's um, a habit of not working out is the same as the habit of working out. Are there certain things you do each day? Yeah, um, you know, I like in a, in a perfect perfect world, and um, it's a world where my workout partner is always there and everything. Which he's in vacation right now, so my perfect world has been pushed back about two hours. But in a perfect world, I am getting a morning routine accomplished, and I think it's very important that we don't call it an afternoon routine or a dinner routine. This is a morning routine, meaning wake up in the morning uh, at the same time, and a routine means something almost every single day, and. Uh, you have to ask yourself these questions like, well, what the hell do I care about You know, health and why do I care about a morning routine? Well, if you get something done in the beginning of the day and something that's productive and it gets your brain going, it's going to set your, your whole day up for success uh, in any way that you want. The success could be monetarily you know, evaluated. It could be love evaluated. It can be just going out and exploring something you know, and good for the soul related. But either way, if you wake up early in the morning and you get certain things done in order, right? Um, I think it really can help out your life. And I think at that point, if you get that first thing done, then it allows your brain to really not be so uh, reactionary, I guess is that a word, but uh, but more of like I can control a life, you know? And that's, I think a lot of people get controlled by life. And I, I think a lot of people that understand why a morning ritual is so important understand that um, there is a way to control the life, right? So don't get controlled by life, but try to attempt to control the life. And that's the reason why I think morning routines are so important is because it gives those people and those individuals that have that discipline the ability to control their life. 
I think that's a great um, concept. I've seen some people hack it like they've um, they put their they have to check their cell phone like um, you know they get on their phone in the morning right when they wake up and they spend an hour on email so they hacked it and they put their phone like out their front door with their running shoes so like they have to at least get out of the house first and once they're already there with their running shoes they just go because they're not as self motivated as you they have to hack themselves and that's just self awareness I guess. They know themselves well and they want to be healthy because no one, very few people regret a morning workout. It's just no, hard to Yeah, get you're right. Out. You're absolutely right about that. Do you, do you work out in the morning, Chris? Yeah, I'm working out every morning and it has been great. When I first started reselling, it got a little bit obsessive and I didn't spend much time. But now that I'm getting more into a groove, the daily workout um, has really, really helped me stay more energetic. And it's it's actually the opposite for me. If I don't get an early morning workout, I have less energy through the day, even though workout expends tons of energy. Yeah. So it is weird how that works, energy wise. Um, I wanted to ask you. You you're um, one of the rare people that I know that has strong cognitive ability and is also strong. And I mean that as like the least stereotypical way as possible. But you you're a thinker and you're also strong. And so do you feel like in your diet, um, I've read some studies saying that people who are sedentary most of the time, they need sort of like high sugar, not necessarily sugar, but simple carbs because your brain can digest that faster. And let's say, you know, people are doing definitely more complex carbs for their body. I wanted to hear your take on balancing those. Yeah, I think with the simple car or the simple sugars, any of those simple carbohydrates, your body's going to, you know, you can take them in much more rapidly. Like the complex ones, it's going to be tougher to get them in in a massive scale. Like a simple carb could be like Skittles. It could be like, you know, just random stuff and energy drinks and sodas. And it's easy to pound those things down, like no problem. But, you know, sit there and take those simple carbs. And I go, okay, well, you know, take the exact amount of calories that you just took in, which could be hundreds, right, in, in a simple sitting. And I want you to take it I want you to only eat it with black beans, for example, or uh, mm. sweet potatoes with the skin, right? And you wouldn't be able to get through two of those and you'd be like full already, right? And it's because uh, uh, fiber, it's a because um, it's much more slower burning. There's a lot of reasons why um, a, simple, uh, a simple carbohydrate versus a complex carbohydrate is um, not the way you want to go. So you want to be going with complex carbohydrates so you can get a much more, it's like stoking the fire. It keeps the fire stoked. You ever been to a bonfire and it just like flashes real quick and it's done? Like mm -hmm. no one cares about that bonfire. But people want to go to bonfires where the thing is hot all the time and you can have fun. And that's the kind of like analogy I give towards a uh, complex carbohydrate. It's like stoking the bonfire. It's like throwing in a piece of wood every now and then, except you've eaten, you know, you've eaten a potato and it's just like, it's, it's slowly, slowly, slowly powering you through the day. And until you get another potato in, for example, um, as opposed to like a bag of Skittles. And then all of a sudden it's like your, your energy is down and you have another bag of Skittles, your energy is down another bag of Skittles. So you can kind of see how one, while they're both carbohydrates, one is absolutely terrible for you. Uh, definitely leads to more uh, fat production. And the other one leads to more power and it leads to more um, actual energy, like true energy. So um, if that's the way I can kind of like describe it, typically when you get with, with simple kind of sugars or simple carbohydrates, you're dealing with a lot more sugars and a lot of times uh, high fructose corn syrup type stuff, um, things that are made in labs, right? As opposed to things that were made from mother earth. And that's important. So. They make, or uh, yeah, it's so it's so interesting how much stuff that we eat is synthetic and made in a in a lab, and it's hard to you, if you can't pronounce it's probably not from from Mother Nature. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit to um, most of my audience is resellers, and a lot of them have um, back problems, mobility problems. They're also sedentary at a desk. They don't have great mobility. They're not going to be um, necessarily, you know, running a marathon or surfing. Um, do you have any tips for maybe improving mobility for people who have been sedentary for a long time and aren't going to necessarily be super active? Right. I've met a lot of sedentary people in my life and um, especially reseller based. And um, I think when they come in contact with me and they start th realizing how I think, uh, even our, our good friend Steve Rakin is a perfect example of this. Um, many years ago, right, when we started the Green Room University, um, it required him to come into Austin, you know, multiple times a year and for business reasons mostly but even within those business reasons he came into town and uh, i was always working out like that was one of the very first things we'd take care of during the day and uh 
I would talk to him on the phone and I'll be like, I know, I hear that you want these things to change in your life. You want mobility, you want muscle, you want to be, feel confident, you want all the things that everyone I think truly wants, like Steve Rakin wanted it real bad. But um, when I talked to him, he's like, yeah, but I can't do your workouts because um, like my back hurts or my wrist hurts or something hurts, something else hurts. Um, and it's been that way my entire life. So, and uh, at, at which point I asked him, you know, well, how bad do you really want it? Because if you want something really bad enough, there are a lot of times, and my dad has told me this many times, he's a retired anesthesiologist from the MD Anderson um, Hospital in Houston. Um, and in a couple of times in my life when I was like, oh my God, like, you know, shoulder injury hurts, got to go to a sports medicine doctor and they want to get invasive and start, you know, bringing ligaments together again and all that kind of stuff. He was like, hold on. It's like before you get like that, before you go under the knife and get all invasive and all that stuff, he's like, one thing that is certain, and a lot of times science can't explain it, is that the human body is incredible, very, very incredible things. Like the human body can repair itself in very interesting ways that science can't even like begin to explain. But uh, the last resort should always be the the cheating, the liposuction, the, all this other random stuff that people resort to thinking it's the, it's the solution. That should be the last thing that you do. The first thing that you should do in any, in any, in any respect, when you have hurting knees or a hurting back, or um, you have pains here and there is you need to start eating a good diet and you need to incre increase the blood flow to the, that region of your body. Okay. Whether it's isometric holding or stretching or band workouts or all that kind of stuff, you got to get blood in that one area. Okay. And you want to focus on unweighted higher repetition type stuff. So if someone that's sedentary and a lot of resellers are, that's the, way, that's the reason why I think it's absolutely imperative for people to listen to what I have to say or what anyone has to say that's fit and that is a reseller is that it can be done um, if you have things like, oh, my, my back hurts, I got pinched nerves and stuff. Guess what? I got pinched nerves too, right? But I work out, I'm strong and I feel great every single day and I'm getting a lot of things accomplished in my life, but it's because I'm thinking differently. I'm not taking the cards that life is going to hand me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build my own deck of cards, right? I'm not going to take the cards that life is going to give me. And uh, I think with simple things and simple knowing that you can, so it has to start with the simple, like, you know what, maybe I can do certain things with my life. Like he says, I can't do this. Maybe I can do these things. And I really believe if people can start understanding that it starts with the mind and your body will execute the rest. It's the mind that has to change, right? Most of the people that have problems with their lives, it could be lifting problems. It can be love problems, everything. It's because there's a vision, there's a vision of yourself in your subconscious that is just a certain way, right? And you're just, you will, you can't see it any other way until you adjust the vision of yourself in your subconscious. And then your conscious ex executes the rest of the thing. But most people subconsciously are just like, ah, worthless, you know, uh, I'm always going to have pain or, uh, you know, I'm never going to be able to be fit. Um, and it can stem to reselling things too. Like, oh, I'm never going to get a thousand listings on eBay. I'm never going to make $3,000 a month. Like it can, it, it's a lot of things that's in your subconscious. And when you wake up in the day, the subconscious affects the conscious. And there's the only way that you can actually adjust the whole thing is by repetitive natures of certain things, good habits, um, reciting goals, right? And you kind of think, oh, the, great. Here comes that that BS about like reciting goals on a piece of paper every morning that all the CEOs and all the popular people in America do. They do it for a reason, right? They're doing it because they're adjusting the subconscious. That's the only reason they're doing it. There's no other reason. So if you can adjust your subconscious to realize that you are much more capable than your back pain or your leg pain or your elbow pain or your arthritis or your asthma, um, I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised to see that when you start making small results, you're, you're only going to get more addicted to it. You're only going to be like, oh my God, like what else can I change in my life? Like what else can I do that I've spent 10 years sitting in this chair going, I can't do this. So while not, while not trying to be a rant kind of thing, I really aim to inspire people, but I like to give it to people as raw as I can because people are full of excuses, Chris. Like it, it's, it's not annoying to me. I know this, like I've been around people enough and people are full of excuses and it's, it's terrible. I feel like I'm looking at an individual that's like wasting their life, right? You, you, you're taking the excuses. You're just, that's taking life like for what it gives you. Like, you know, what, what is life going to give you tomorrow? Like, why not try to control all that? And you can't. I love this saying that, um, you know, everything goes to where the blood flows. Like if you want, you know, your reselling business, if you want to get really good at selling shoes, 
sell as many shoes as possible. Go get a part-time job at a shoe store and learn how shoes are sold for sizing. In a month of selling shoes retail, you learn more than just looking at it online. Where your energy flows, I forgot the rest of the saying, but that makes sense with, with your um, mobility. I've heard the best, one of the best shoulder um, mobility exercises is simply just taking a band and doing this motion from front to back. And that, if you think about that, what is that? That's just driving blood to that area of your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's as simple as it gets. And you mentioned the low reps, high volume. That totally makes sense because your body's flowing. Yeah. Um, and workouts are notoriously like low reps, high, like high volume. I mean, anytime you look at it, um, I warm up extensively my shoulders it's a to me it's the i think it could be argued it's the number one joint in your body like you would think oh isn't that your hips your your knees like not really like your shoulders involved with like every pectoral movement every back movement that you got reaching out behind your seat in a car to get your purse or what it's involved in almost everything that you do um with the exception of like walking right but uh like your biceps are affected by it, your triceps. And the only reason I know this as a fact is because my shoulders, I probably have the shoulders of a, uh, I don't know, maybe a 50 or 60 year old. Like they are hurting. Like I'm telling you right now, like they, but I actually warm them up a lot, like a lot. And um, it's just, I don't know. Like I, I pride myself, I, I pride myself on good shoulders, but shoulders are everything. Like it's the way you initiate a, a bottom turn on a surfboard. It's the way you snowboard down a mountain and control, you know, your, it, it all comes from the swaying of your upper body, your shoulders and everything. So what I'm trying to say is like, uh, you know, high rep, it, it could be lower back. It can be knee problems, anything like as soon as you involve high rep, um, usually uh, body weight or band type, uh, blood flow, you know, workouts and stuff like that, um, you start to realize that with a good diet, right, and blood flow, like you can bring the nutrients and the minerals and anything that you need to that area and the area will start to repair itself typically. And that's a very important thing to know. Like, um, you know, I could take the cards that I got 10 years ago when I had a snowboarding accident and I had to be, uh, you know, snowmobiled off a mountain. Um, and this like, and I still have some weird like lumps. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but like there's a bump here on my body, but not here. And that's because there's only like two more ligaments, like holding this entire shoulder muscle in place out of like five, like crucial ones. So, um, you know, the doctor was like, let's get invasive. Let's start reattaching things. My dad was like, look, you can build a strength, just inc increase your blood flow and everything. And I do. And now my shoulders are strong as ever, you know? And, um, but they still hurt a little bit. Um, but that's just the card I'm going to get in life, right? I'm a, I'll, I'll take that card because there's so many people out there that would be willing to have that card. I have to be able to realize like, you know, some cards, I'm doing the best with the card that I got on that one, you know? I wish I could be stronger, but uh, I'm pretty strong. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But uh, everyone wishes they could be a little stronger. I, mean, I saw this, um, this guy, that, this fitness person was saying, you want to instantly improve your mood, just change your shoulder position. Oh, yeah. It's called you power just, positioning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you just think about the fact that so many resellers are on a computer, on their phone, their bodies are all inward, uh -huh. and your yeah. mood is going to be severely affected. All right. That's it, man. Hold on. <laughs> all right. No, I feel good today, but like as, as you said that, I'm like this, right? So, all right. Now, I feel good, man. Power positioning. So, I want to talk about listing. You've sold a lot of things on eBay. Do you batch? How do you avoid body fatigue? during the listing process, which can be tedious. You can be bending, boxing, taping. How do you ergonomically protect yourself from doing lots of damage? Because you've sold a lot of stuff. Yeah, so I've, I've sold a lot of things on eBay. And, and I want to preface this with like, look, I do part time now, like hustling. Um, I'm actively in the green room, um, you know, like managing that whole thing. And um, there are a bunch of other random little things that I'm working on private label product right now. I'm also working on putting more uh, stuff onto the workout channel, which should be down below as well. But uh, these are things that I think uh, it's my passion. And that's the reason why I'm like heading in that direction because I'm clearly a decent reseller, but I'm good at like the health and fitness stuff. So while that's like kind of under, how do I say it? The, I need to make sure that I divulge that information just like I've divulged information about eBay and Amazon, all that kind of stuff through the past five years on YouTube. So now it's like my chance to give it to YouTube in the fitness sense. So I'm doing that. But to answer your question, um, how do I deal with the fatigue and, uh, the, you know, how do I batch things? First of all, when I do my listings for eBay 
and particularly eBay, I'm taking all my pictures at once. That's the most important thing. I do batch uploads, you know, shift key holding down on a MacBook Pro, uh, selecting 12 pictures, uploading it, you know, at a later time to a listing and that kind of stuff. Like, I like that. Um, I don't deal too much with templates because most of the stuff that I hustle is very different things from one to another. I find them at thrift stores and garage sales, and you know, you've seen my videos, so you kind of know. Like, I'm not just going to a shoe outlet and just buying 200 pairs of shoes because if I was doing that, that would just be, you know, uh, barcode and just going with Amazon, but I'm not doing that. I'm doing, you know, things that are sustainable <laughs> um, given the week and how many hours I have to work with. Um, when it comes to boxing and all that kind of stuff, typically I will erect a, on my squat uh, power rack thing, it has these like catcher arms, right? That come out like, I don't know, about two feet. So I will put two boards on that. I'll set that thing to about uh, hip level, if not higher. I'll put two boards on it, and it creates me a table, like a standing desk kind of thing, right? And so with a standing desk, um, one of the parts of the – these are very, very long pieces of wood. I uh, bought them at Lowe's, and um, I, I put it up there. And uh, at the very far corner of that wood is uh, – it's really close to a light and a very – you know, a whole bunch of light sources. So that's where I take a lot of my pictures. Like I'll put everything at the corner of the wood and snap, 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 snap. I'll take the, the product over here, put another product in that corner, snap, 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 and I'll take my pictures. And then after I'm doing that, <laughs> I box it up, but it's always at kind of hip level. It's never really at ground level. And I used to, back in the day, do ground level kind of stuff. And I did notice that, uh, yeah, you start to hurt in the knees, right? You start to do some, you know, you, you, it's just natural. Like if you spend a lot of time at ground level and you're not an MMA, MMA person that's grappling all day long, uh, you're not using those those ligaments a whole lot, right? Even when I'm riding a bike, like I'm not at ground level. Even when I'm surfing, like I'm not at ground level. I'm typically standing up and I have a little bit of a bend in my knee, but I'm not at ground level until I decide to pop up from the board. So when you're doing reselling at ground level, a lot of times you're staying down there. I've noticed what you said, Chris, you're, you're kind of crouched and your knees are, and when you finally stand up, you might get a rush of blood to the head. You might get you know, your knee might get tight and you go, oh man, you know, so if you're having those kind of problems, I would say, first of all, band workouts, you know, light workouts, heavy reps, you need to start getting because it's uh, blood in that area, right? Very important because if the pain is showing then, it's going to be showing all the time. You probably want to start involving blood flow in the area, but more importantly, you want to be doing something at like hip level, right? You want to put a desk at hip level, even if it's a, a dresser that you're working with or something. And stand, stand up desks are kind of expensive these days. So you can do what I did. Um, you know, I, it's only a temporary thing. Like as soon as I'm done with my boards of wood, like I just take it, I put it to the corner of a room and I have an amazing gym in my garage, right? So you can think about things like that, but you definitely don't want to be sitting. I like to be, I prefer to be standing up doing a lot of my hustling things versus sitting down in a chair um, versus on ground. Um, if I'm on ground now, it's typically if I am boxing up something a little bit larger and heavier, right? Or something like that. So, but that's the only reason I am. Um, there's nothing wrong with being on the ground. It's just even with my workout routine right now, I'm still not trained to stand on low in low positions like a very long period of time, right? So that's just what it is. So I'm just going to bring it or make this point that I have a drafting table, which I'll show you guys in just a second, which is at, I adjusted it for my height. Now, here's the interesting thing. It doesn't work for any other person because the height is adjusted to what your hip level is. Yeah. Like, you know, my girlfriend can't use the same table. It would hurt her versus a lower table. And right. it just depends on, on what you're doing. Drafting tables are relatively inexpensive on Craigslist. They're pretty common. There's always a starving artist or somebody getting rid of one that I found. I picked mine up for 60 bucks, but on Amazon, they're only $150. That's not that expensive. If, you, if eBay is your income or Amazon and you're not using a, a table that can be adjusted, you're in trouble and you can also make it yourself for free. Um, so what are your thoughts on, on using a tilting table? Um, I don't, I haven't messed with a tilting draft table at all. So I couldn't give any input on that. What I have messed with is mostly, uh, I've, okay, I've messed with erecting, um, like a standard Rubbermaid type picnic table. You ever seen the big Rubbermaid ones with the fold out legs? Everyone's got them, you know, garage yep. sales have them all the day. I like those, but those tend to be too low. Like they're mid thigh and I don't like them. But this power rack that I have like is perfect. Like sometimes I just feel like having the items higher than other days. Like, I like it a lot, but I realize it's a power rack. It takes up a big amount of space. It's mostly for workout use, um, and I just have a very peculiar kind of situation. Most people would never have that situation, but I decided to make the best of it. I was like, you know what? I can have a workstation 
and still have a gym and still be standing up. Like it, it was like the perfect thing for me. But let's see your drafting table. You have a you have a drafting well, this is table. interesting because like at my height, right? Okay. So I have this table set up, and I got it for sixty bucks. You can adjust the the tilt to okay. adjust to wherever you're at, and then I can work here. Oh, I see and, it. Okay, and there's yeah. not a lot of fatigue um, because of you can adjust the table to your your specific. Yeah, height. that's cool. That's I, huge. I would like that. That's cool. If you're going to be listing a lot, um, so there's been a couple of comments. I want you to speak about water for just a second. Sure. And I'll give you my take on it. Go ahead. Okay. So um, water is one of the big things that um, that I, for the past many, 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 many years, I mean, let's, let's just say forever, but it, I think in the past five years, I took a really hard study at it, like why and everything. Um, so water is very crucial to, it's basically your body's filtration. It's like how the body, you know, brings things around. Um, um, it also aids with uh, proper sodium uh, absorption and also release and all that. Um, it takes a lot of strain off your kidneys. It makes your skin better. It immediately will take your metabolism 10 or 15% higher than where it is, typically if you're over or adequately hydrated. Um, and it aids in the body's cooling, right? That's the most important reason why most people should be drinking water is it it is essentially the lifeblood of your body, right? Like, I mean, for you to cool properly, you have to have adequate water supply or else you're going to have headaches and eventually you crumple to the floor and you won't feel good, right? Um, but I tend to, you know, the, the, the argument becomes like, well, what, how much is enough water for each person? I personally do somewhere around a gallon to a gallon and a half every single day. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but the first half of my gallon in the morning is done within my workout, right? That's the first half gallon right there because I'm trying to like, first of all, when I wake up and I have water, it's there to like, it immediately like boost your metabolism. Like you'll feel better already. Like right there, it's tough to go to bed. If you drink a full glass of water, you might get to bed, but 30 minutes later, an hour later, you're going to be going to use the bathroom. So that's one of the only downsides to how much water I intake I, uh, I'm doing right now is I'm probably slightly overhydrated, but I'd much rather be slightly overhydrated because the lifestyle that I want is a lifestyle where, where is if I'm working on eBay stuff and then all of a sudden an opportunity comes up and then I got someone's like, let's go ride mountain bikes or let's go do this or let's go do that. I, I can't be chugging water at that point getting ready for that thing. Like I have to be able to be adequately or overhydrated ready to go for that. And that's what I like. I like lifestyles like that. Like, you know, just whenever anything comes or an opportunity to be active, like I want to be able to do it. And so um, one of the easiest ways to suffer through an activity that's cardio based is to be underhydrated, right? Or dehydrated. Um, so you definitely want to enter being overhydrated. And that starts hours before and sometimes even the night before to be overhydrated so you can have a, a really good workout, you know, mountain biking or running or whatever. Um, so the first half of the gallon comes down in the morning, like in the first hour of my day, like I'm already, there's about a um, f first hour and a half. There's already a, ga a half gallon gone there. And then I'm doing like, you know, glasses about pint glasses every hour or so, you know, for the rest of the day about a pint glass. So I say a pint glass cause almost everybody knows what a pint glass of beer looks like. Um, but yeah, um, I'm doing that and, you know, am I using the bathroom a lot? Yeah. And that's a lot, a lot of the ways I can gauge whether my hydration is going well. I look at my urine and I go, is it really yellow? Is it really clear? And I don't want it to be clear, right? I want it to have a tiny, tiny bit of yellow. Like that's what I'm looking for. But too much yellow, you're in trouble. You're, you're absolutely in trouble, right? And then way too clear, you're flushing out too much stuff. You know, you're not getting, you're flushing out nutrients and things that should actually remain in your body. Like you're flushing that out too early. So that's kind of the way I do it. And you can call it bro science or whatever, but it's worked for me. Um, and I, I know from doing uh, extensive endurance based cardio stuff, like when I am prehydrated or overhydrated, the feeling you get is much better. And uh, you can actually concentrate on the activity. You can get the most out of it versus I've been almost near heat stroke many times um, and then definitely dehydrated, which occurred not like a couple, like a day ago. Uh, I entered dehydrating, dehydrated into one of my things. And uh, it's a huge mistake. Like you try to take in as much as you can during the activity. No amount of hydration will uh, take away the headache or the feeling of like loose ligaments. Like you feel like you're about to fall apart. Like it's, it's the worst feeling ever. Chris, you ever had that happen? 
I haven't had I mean, that. You're playing I'm, basketball and you're under, you're dehydrated. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's injury comes from that too. Oh, exactly. Exactly. You know, all right. my um, sprains have come from me basically not properly warming up or not being hydrated. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share something with you, which I think is interesting. My first job was with a company called Strivectin and they try to prevent, um, re, um, or they reduce uh, stretches from pregnant women. And they mm. also sold um, dietary supplements to help you lose weight. And the dietary supplements are basically placebo effect because they can't put anything in it that's too active because then it will screw people up. So they're basically nothing. They're sugar pills. Placebos, and yeah. as the salesperson, I had to help people lose weight. And the recommendation is you need to have 32 ounces of water with the pills three times a day before your meal, right? And the thing is, people were getting insane results because they're underhydrated for one. So now they're suddenly that's hydrated. hilarious. Really? And and, and 32 ounces of water makes you full, so you're eating less. Oh, my God. And no it also, in, in one of your videos, you mentioned this, your skin gets way better. Uh-huh. So people are like, this is the best pill ever. Oh, that's I'm so getting funny. skinnier. My skin's better. I'm happier. I feel mm -hmm. better. But, and, the, and the, you know, I can't tell them that there's anything in it because then we could get sued. So it's just like keep eating the pills. Keep so you knew for a fact that the pills were placebo pills? Nothing in them. Oh, that's crazy. And, but they work because you're supposed to drink 32 ounces of water. That is unbelievable. Them. See, when you actually tell them a measurable way to do it, yeah, unbelievable, huh? But it works. Here's the thing. Nobody cancels because it works. It delivers what they promise, which is weight loss, feel better, look better. They just, yeah. It's just the water part with – and it says right on the bottle, do not take without 32 ounces of water before a meal. Um, you can have less, but it works better when you drink more. And how can you even eat a meal if you chug 32 ounces? You're going to have a light meal. <laughs> that's crazy man but it works and so yeah, people get crazy man when it comes down to like the hydration thing like i don't want to use the restroom like 15 50 times a day it's like well okay then you don't want it that bad like you know i'll give you an example like by the time i've i drank that half gallon in the morning one of my markers i guess or like the way the way i know like i'm on track for the day or at least yeah, I set up the day just right is I come into the gym with about a half gallon, if not more. I put some pre-workout in there and by 45 minutes into my workout, that half gallon should be done, like gone. So uh, it gets the pre-workout of my body and it's getting it not at one time. Like you ever taken pre-workout at one time, you get this massive energy spike, but then you feel terrible afterwards, like within, you know, 30 minutes. Uh, what I like to do is I like to sip my pre-workout or black coffee. I'll even dilute it in a half gallon of water. I don't care. But uh, I like to sip my stuff better so my power curve, my energy curve is much more sustainable, right? Um, and then that after that, you no, know, it's <laughs> totally, totally. Trust me. Caffeine studies, like they're like, look, if you actually have a lot, most most people at you know sit, sit down jobs are doing what two to three cups a day, but when they do the cups, it's like pound down, boom, and then it's like huge energy spike, and then productivity goes downhill like quickly as opposed to from eight to 12 sipping the first cup right and then from you know one to five sipping your second cup you get a much more uh better productivity um energy range but my point is i edit videos usually if i'm in the gym by six in the morning i'm out of the gym by 7 30 i'm at the coffee shop editing videos from like 8 to 11 30 um and from that 8 to 11 30 i probably go to the <laughs> i probably use uh the bathroom four to five times and i don't care right i mean I'm just like it's kind of weird i'm pretty sure people have made the connection like hey here's that fit workout dude that comes in here and edits videos and he's always going to the bathroom back and forth um but it's because that's the life i chose and i could care less what anybody thinks i know how i'm performing and i can look around that coffee shop and you know i can i can usually go like i'm probably above most of these people when it comes to fitness level um you know stress reduction like all that kind of stuff and it, if these people only knew the value of, you know, this right here, just like being overhydrated, they would just be like, yeah, right. Like I could never do that, but you can. And it starts with certain things like it used for me before the gallon thing happened. It was a pint. I was just, you know, a pint when I woke up and then a pint like every hour. Right. And then the gym, one of the ways I measured it back in college was eight slurps every 15 minutes from a water fountain. <laughs> yeah. Because each slur, each good slurp is about a, ounce like if you shoot whiskey or whatever in an ounce you know a shot glass each good slurp should be an ounce so if you do eight slurps every 15 minutes that's like being adequately hydrated for a workout so if you don't have a gallon and you're like i don't want to do it, i don't want to be the douche in the gym that has a gallon of water you know what i'm saying i could care less but 
then you can just go to the water fountain and do eight slurps, like count eight slurps every 15 minutes. And that's already like, you're ahead of the curve at that point. You're like, you're way ahead of the curve. I like the eight slurp rule. That is a yeah, really, man. that's a nice little, in the, every 15 minutes is nice. And it's like in between a few couple of sets too. Dude, eight, I'm t I would sit there and like, there would be like two people behind me, like waiting, like I'd be like on like the sixth slurp and like, I can't leave until I do eight. Like that was just the way it was. Um, and I did that for five years of my life, you know, eight slurps. Let's talk about um, some easy meals or food hacks. I feel like a lot of people can't out train their bad diet. Yeah, um, man, this one's a tough one because while everyone, and this is how society will probably tell people like to get healthy and like get on a diet, or, like open your fridge and just throw everything out. Like, look, anytime you do any abrupt adjustment to anything in life, it's probably gonna you're probably gonna have a massive relapse that's worse than the original uh, scenario that you were in the first place. So what you want to do is you want to wean yourself off certain things. And that's why it's advisable. Like if you want to get fit and if you're like, oh, but the, the way to get fit is to do healthy meals. Like, look, one of the easiest ways to get fit and to start your fitness journey is to be adequately hydrated. Like start on that, start on that for like two weeks. See if you can actually down a half gallon or a gallon a day. Like that's important. Second, you know, start going, okay, like I hear about people saying no pastas and no this and no sugars and stuff. Okay. So for maybe, you know, so maybe for two weeks, the next two weeks, you work on removing that from your diet, like sugars, something simple, like just sugars. You can still have the pastas and all that stuff, but for two weeks, you're doing the sugars and you're doing the gallon thing, right? So now you've stacked two things. And the whole point behind this is if you can get 58 right this is the this is your number right here guys like i'm telling you right now like i have a psychologist friend he's really cool and i've asked him this to i've asked i've asked him this question to no end and I, i've always hoped that it would just change the answer would change and it never did but i'm like how long does it take to form a good habit like how long does it form, take and a good habit is something that obviously changes your life it's lasting and uh, by lasting, I mean, it's not reversible. It's something that you enjoy and you can't reverse it. Like you've built it in and it's almost nearly impossible to reverse it. So how long is that? And the answer he would give me every time was 58 days, 58. So I talked about this in the green room seminar. It was the one, it was the, one of our closing segments when we were in Austin, Texas, I was speaking about it. 58 days. And you might think like, oh man, that's a lot. And it is a lot. Like it's a lot to do something over and over and over and over for 58 days but here's the problem here's the crazy part about it if you try on day 59 to not do it you will find yourself it would be nearly impossible to undo it like that's how hard it is to undo a good habit and with a good habit and with the instance of bringing on good habits the converse effect i'm not effect but the converse lifestyle that you can adopt is 58 days of a bad habit and I think that's where a lot of people are, honestly, Chris. Like they've done so many days of a bad habit that More they different. don't know how to undo it, you know? So that's why I say take it slowly. Don't be the person that opens the fridge and just throws all this food in the trash. And all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm healthy. I'm going to the store. And then you realize like this was too abrupt. Like you got to start slow, start with the water, proceed on to the sugars, Proceed on to the uh, heavier, heavier carbs that are probably just excess calories. You're never going to burn pastas pre predominantly. Um, and then, you know, proceed maybe into leafy greens, like, you know, X amount of times a day. And to, so to answer Chris's question about like, what's a healthy option to eat and everything, I'm going to kind of give, break it down for you. If I could break it down for you in five things, five concepts of like how I eat, um, this can help you guys out. So one, the first concept is if you can eat correctly 90% of the time, then you're gonna be just fine, or even 80% of the time. And the reason why I say this is because if you're doing four meals a day or five meals a day, and you multiply it times seven days, you're at 28 to about 35 meals, optimally, right? 28 to 35 meals, and that will represent your 100% of the week, right? Now, if, for me, 90% rule applied to that, that means four of my meals can be dirty. Dirty meaning they can be not adhering to any of my protocols. They can be pizza, the crazy meals. Yesterday I was like eating queso and like eating ranch sauce and eating burritos and like all day I was just eating like hell. Um, and that's okay. Like 90% of your meals can be cheat meals, but I call them dirty because there's no reason in having a cheat meal if it's not something dirty, honestly. If it's not donuts or something that you absolutely like would never have on an everyday basis, but you enjoy then it's not really a cheat, right? So 
rule number one, 90% of the meals, 89% of the meals, tune them in, get them right. Now, rule number two is know some of the foundations of a good diet, grilled vegetables, grilled uh, meats, uh, you know, things like that. Very, very important. Grilled uh, stuff will always trump fried foods or wok fried or any of that kind of stuff. It'll always be better. Number three is um, heavier carbs, you know, for the maybe the first 66% of the day and the last 33, 34% of the day, you go to more lighter carbs like spinach and broccoli and things like that. Because as you go to sleep, you don't want to be going to sleep and have two or three sweet potatoes in your belly. Like you just don't want that. Like that's just not a good thing. But uh, so that's the third thing. The fourth thing is uh, always have a pre-workout after your workout pre-workout smoothie after your workout. Um, so that means like Vitamix or Ninja Blender or a uh, new magic bullet, you know, that kind of stuff um, in that smoothie. And the concept behind the smoothie should be uh, easily absorbable within 30 minutes to an hour of your workout, but really within 30 minutes. Um, and it should be a small meal. It should not be a big meal whatsoever. It should be a small, like my pre my smoothie today, for example, was a banana, two scoops of whey protein and a serving of Greek yogurt without any sugar in it. And that plus one ice cube plus about a uh, coffee cup of water, blend it up, boom. That was like the first meal of my day today was a uh, post-workout meal of a smoothie. And it wasn't a big thing, you know, it was pretty small. In fact, I think in calories, it'll only be 300 maybe. That's not very much. So, um, and then the fourth, the fifth thing and the fifth and the last thing outside of the smoothie and all of the other stuff I talked to you guys about would be um, healthy fats. I think that's really important to know what a healthy fat is versus a non-healthy fat. So I'm just going to give you the cheat on it. A healthy fat would be something like salmon, rich in omega-3s. It would be avocados, which I think is just a power food in itself. Um, nuts, such as Brazilian nuts, almonds, uh, things like that, peanuts. Um, but And maybe even the egg yolk, right? The yolk of an egg, a healthy fat right there. But certainly not um, butters or cheeses or fried foods as your healthy fat. Like you just got to know, like if you, if I could just suggest one and olive oils, things like that, olive oils are really healthy. Um, if I could suggest one fat of all the fats, I would just tell you it's an avocado. That's just personally me. I think that's the ultimate, ultimate uh, fat right there. Wow. This has been a wealth of, of knowledge. <laughs> I wanted to just share one thing that helped me work out. Um, I used to think like, oh, I'm going to work out. Oh, I'm going to get to the gym. And then one of my friends said, just say, I'm the type of person that works out every day. And you just be, just become that person. Mm -hmm. And then you are that person. But if you're like, I'm going to work out tomorrow, then you are now the person that works out never. Yeah. (laughs) So that's an interesting concept because you identify yourself as somebody in shape. I think even, and I think that that self-identification translation to your whole activity. Yeah, that's subconscious stuff too. You know, like I don't see myself any other way than being the best that I could possibly be. And the funny thing is even the best that I am, I mean, the other day I weighed in at 190 at 10%, like body fat dry on Friday morning. Like that's pretty good at 38 years old if you think about it, you know. Um, if you look at the percentile of males at 38, they're probably stuck in a cubicle. They're probably way overweight. They probably can't bench X. They can't squat X. Um, they have zero endurance. They couldn't, you know, run, propel a bike through a forest, uh, surf. They can't, they pretty much have taken what life gave them. Right. And I just, I looked at it and I was like, I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to work for corporate America anymore. I'm just not going to take that life. Like it's not the life I want. It's not the life I would ever want for my children. So why live it? And then tell them some false story, right? When I have kids, like, no, they're going to know, like, your daddy was someone that really challenged the whole thing and thought differently. And uh, just, you know, he took certain cards that he couldn't get rid of. Like, I have asthma, right? Um, It's never a card. I I won't be able to let go of that card ever. Um, But within that, I've decided, like, I'm not going to let asthma affect me like it did in high school and stuff. Like, there were times where I was crippled on a bathroom floor in California having an asthma attack right in college years. Like I was just crippled by this stuff. And I was like, you know what? I need to train more on an endurance level and get rid of this, you know, and not be an, uh, how do I say it? Not be all about this inhaler. Right. And I remember asking my, I would do like eight inhalers a day or like puffs. And I asked my dad one day, like, 
you know, how bad is the inhaler for you? He was like, oh, the inhaler is not good for you whatsoever. He's like, if you're doing it any more than once every other day or so, he's like, you're in trouble. And I was like thinking, holy crap, like this is not good at all. Like, you know, um, and plus it leads to cataracts and weird things later. And uh, he was like, and once I heard that, I was like, Jesus, like I got, I've got to redo some of this stuff. So I was built and I was, you know, what I thought was fit back in college. And then there were some times where got an asthma attack and put you to the floor and it's scary, man. I really, really thought I was going to die. And uh, that's the time when I was like, you know what? I got this card and there's nothing I can do about this card. I wouldn't say that. I was like, but I can do something about the card, should I say, right? But I got a card. Everyone's got a card, guys. Like everybody has them. No one's ever not going to have a card. Chris, you have cards. Maybe you've discussed them with people. Maybe you haven't. I chose, you know, to take it. People know about my cards for the most part. And you just I want to dis- the I best that mention, you can. I want to mention a silent killer right now, which you have mentioned indirectly, which is stress. Oh, dude, when worst. You, yes. When you choose your own lifestyle, like even if you're working 80 to 100 hours a week, there's different kinds of stresses, but you've created what you, your own challenges and it's different. And I think that weighs on you a lot differently. And I think that, you know, aiming for a lower stress lifestyle is not easy. Um, but you can choose. I think the more decisions you make, being preemptive or preventative, like you were mentioning earlier, I think that helps reduce reduce stress. Um, maybe you can speak on stress, and then we'll take a couple of questions, and then. Sure. Um, it's funny. I was actually filming a video earlier today, and stress was one of the indirect benefits or the direct benefits of working out. Like that's what the video premise is. Is four or five like like real things that you can expect if you decide to start working out or start decide to get physically fit like these five things or four things i can't remember what number it was but these things will absolutely start happening in your life right so one of them was like stress and so one of them was stress one was like agility mobility the other one was uh, strength the other one was endurance like these things even with moderate exercise will improve like you will feel better you will be able to go bigger you know bigger and better, like anywhere you want in your life on a fitness level. But stress is one of those things. <laughs> and the funny thing is that it's not really, a, it's one of those interesting things that you say it's a silent killer and no one, it's really not measurable, Chris, right? Like they can measure, you know, LDLs and cholesterols and like your creatinine in your blood or creatine, whatever you call it in your bloodstream. They, you can get all these blood markers and stuff done once a year and you're like, oh, I'm healthy. Yay. But then if you're an overly stressed out individual, um, more than likely, yeah, I would be willing to say confidently on a bro science level that you're probably shaving off about 10 years on your life, like right there. I think 10 years is about, that's being, I don't know, that it could be more, right? Because it's never going to stop. Like that's the thing. This world is getting harder and harder and harder and all the media and all the stuff you're seeing and all the YouTube videos you're watching, you're probably like, oh my God, like where do I start? There are too many opportunities and money is so important in the USA. That's the reason why you go to other countries and they have like mandatory 30 hour work weeks or sometimes less. And uh, they have incredible like uh, healthcare systems and crazy vacation pay things going on. And you realize when you walk around those other countries, like the people are really, really happy. Like that's one thing you've noticed. If you go to other countries, you can go to Spain, France, whatever, man, people are just happy. They got mandatory siestas going on during the day, meaning mandatory government mandated nap times. Like that is nuts. You think I'm kidding. Go to Spain right now and see if you can shop between the hours of two and five o'clock. Like it just doesn't happen. Man, places closed down. And uh, here in America, they're like running you guys into the ground. Corporate America running you in the ground. Everyone wants to make numbers. And it's all about money and about the stature and what you have is what you are. And that's the problem is that over time, all that repetitiveness and 58 days of just being like that, you start to realize money is important, right? Like money is everything and uh, stature is everything and these material goods, that's everything too. And it couldn't be further from the truth. So that definitely leads to stress because not a lot of people get to understand how to get to that kind of lifestyle. And once you get to that lifestyle, you realize it's complete BS. Like all of it was BS. And uh, I think that's definitely a silent killer, Chris. Like people think, you know, if I don't get to this level, you know, in eBay or that level on FBA, like I'm not going to be worth anything. I'm not going to, you know, this, I'm not, it's a waste of my time. Right. But you have to ask yourself a lot of times when you're seeing some of these videos and 
watching whatever it be fitness videos or reselling videos you have to look at the person for what they are and what they stand for and look at what they're doing like with the rest of their time in their lives and if it's not something that you want to become then stop following that person like that's just the bottom line if, if the person isn't what you want to become and doesn't resemble any of the traits that you want to have in your life then leave the channel like that's just it i'm not trying to like i said chris this is gonna be a raw show like last week I said on one of my videos, like I'm gonna be, on, like I proudly said I'm gonna be on your video because I think it'd be cool to shoot it raw with you. When I met you in real life, like you're cool, you're a raw individual, like you kind of tell it how it is, and uh, you get it though. Like you're a reseller, but you stay in shape, like you get it, and you think critically, and that's I don't know. Like not many people, when I meet them in a in a person to person scale, like I re I really clicked with you. Does that make sense? Even though I was completely under the weather in Las Vegas when I met you, by the way, I was so under the weather, but. Like you struck me, you struck me as the kind of individual individual who's hungry and who controls their life. And so I thought it'd be nice to give him like the rawness of like what he's given me. Right. Does that make sense? I mean, I appreciate that. I definitely usually do what makes for a better story than what makes the most money. So I have taken so many decisions in my life that don't make the most money, but are more interesting and more fun. But here's the thing that I have to be the most grateful for, which is going to sum up this whole video, which is. The person that has great health can have a thousand dreams and the people who have poor health only have one dream. And that's just what happens. When you have great health, you can do whatever you want. You yeah. Know? It allows you, you to have think poor critical. health. You I can't think it allows do you to anything. See it. Yeah. Yeah. I said that on my video too. Like having low stress allows you to see the opportunities that life can give you. Um, I don't know whether that's because of low stress or if that's because of the confidence that comes out of fit, the physical fitness and working out because you know if you're low stress you can kind of see what's going on but if you're confident that's a whole nother ball game like you're about you're able to really execute at that point right it's one thing to be low stress and be like oh my god like you know the ceos of that company are gonna be speaking at this free seminar and oh, i love this company and i would love to work for them one day or whatever and then if you go there you've already acted on one of the things but if you don't open up your mouth and you're not confident they wouldn't want you as a worker they want you know most of these big companies that are like changing the world like teslas they're gonna want outspoken badass people that really believe in something they want people that are thinking and alive and so i can't tell you if i know stress is a killer but if you reduce your stress and you start getting more confident with physical fitness and healthy habits and all that kind of stuff i think that's just a winning combination period like you can't buy that you cannot buy it that's the best part about fitness that i love the most about it is it phys physical fitness and all the benefits that come with it are earned you don't get to fall into it like you can play the lottery and get rich right chris mm -hmm. it's true you can you can play the lottery get rich and go from nothing in your bank account to literally millions in your bank account in one day but you will never see a person go from overweight tear you know t life just bulldozing them over looking like hell uh feeling like hell um has terrible traits about themselves to the very next day being ripped, confident, you know, whole life in order, all that kind of stuff. You'll never see it. And that's why I think it's the best thing to, it's the most elusive and hardest thing to ever get in life is the gift of fitness. Like it's the most elusive. It's the most, I think truly the most desired thing besides money. Money is very desired, but when people get there, they're just like, eh, it's not that much. It's not that great. But physical fitness, most, even like Bezos, when he, you ever see the picture of him recently where he's like the skinny dude and then like he becomes rich and all of a sudden now he starts getting ripped and big and everything. So the money came first. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, but um, I just want to make one more point on this stress thing. It's not like um, stress goes away. It's just how you react to it. So like I remember listening to this billionaire, like has all the money in the world and um, he's in a camp and there's a, Everyone wakes up because there's a bear in the camp. So we're talking life or death. He's about to die. Everyone's freaking out, but he's super calm. And he literally said out loud, this is inconvenient. Like that's, that's the level of stress that a freaking bear in his tent brought him. He was just like, this is an inconvenient thing I have to deal with right now. He didn't that's get freaked. You know, I just thought, <laughs> wow, what a, way to, what a person's reaction to stress. You could be dead, but you can see like a lot of... Um, Navy SEALs and high performing people, their blood, their heart rate actually drops or stays the same in tough situations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go crazy like people who don't deal with stress well. 
Yeah. There's a lot of experimental things out and I can't really say it right now, but there's some things I'm going to be trying this year that I'll probably document more on my workout channel that you guys are going to, I mean, if anyone follows me, I don't know. It's the kind of stuff that could win or lose me a lot of subs, like, but I will be trying it and I will be giving my report back on it, uh, on certain things. So we will see, man. But yeah, the workout channel is interesting. I feel it's a, it's a place where I can really, really be myself and teach people about physical fitness. So you can go check it out at Bod Dam on YouTube, uh, B O D D A M N. And, uh, yeah, I got so videos to can, edit. Everyone can, um, also find um, Chris Bonafide Hustler as Bod Dam on Instagram as well. Oh, yeah. Sure. That's my other, only Instagram, yeah. Any other place that you want people to look for you or find you? Um, you know, mostly the Bonafide Hustler channel and everything. I think by now a lot of the people uh, know about the other channel. What I think is kind of interesting, I don't really like spam my audience about it or anything like that. Um, I have 26,000 subscribers on Bonafide Hustler. I've said it enough times in the public space. There's only like 1,200 or so subscribers on the workout channel. So maybe, you know, resellers don't care too much about it, right? And that's fine. There's nothing wrong about it. But the problem the problem becomes, what good is all the money in the first place? If you're reselling to make all this money, you know, oh my God, I made 8,000 this month and I get to go on vacation and stuff. But if you're not fit enough to enjoy the vacation, or if you can't even walk up the mountain to see the vista, that is in the tourist guide, you know, like who cares? Like, what does the money even matter at that point? What if the, what does the money even matter if you spend half of it on future medical bills? Like you got to start asking yourself these kind of questions. And I'm not just saying that as to be funny or controversial, I, you got to really get the balance guys. Like, I think it's so important. And, um, the balance is everything. The, he who gets the balance gets it all, man. That's just the way it is. Um, and, that's one of the reasons why I'm never like the person that's known to chase the money. Like for me, it's fitness. Um, you know, if you had to rank this, like, what was it? Fitness, family, family and love, and then money. Like mine would be fitness, family, love, and then money. Like it would not be fitness, money, family, or money, fitness, family, or money, family, fitness, or family, then fitness. It just, it would always be, you know, fitness first. Cause if I'm not fit enough, I can't even enjoy my family. I can't even love the way I'm supposed to. Does that make sense? Like I have if you're unfit, order, except for I have food. And there's above faith money. too. What'd you say? There's faith, there's faith too, but I have food above money. Food above money. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think yeah, if, yeah. it's implied if you're fit, that your diet was okay. <laughs> you know? No, I mean, I mean, even have enjoying a donut. I put that above making money. Take a break and have a donut one yeah, time. you got to, man. You, you totally, it. totally have to. And it's just the way the world is, man. That's too much. There are too many things out there that are going to try to unbalance your life, right? And the only thing that can balance your life is you and your habits and uh, your routine, right? Nobody can tell you what routine you need to adopt. That's why you need to start now. You need to start now. Just try some of my routine. Try some of Chris's routine. like. But you make eventually your own custom routine. Mm hmm and as long as it's a good routine that works for you, then get 58 days of it, right? And lock it down and then try 58 days of something else. Did you know, Chris, that this year, last year, I rode a bike every single day for the entire year, right? Every day. Uh, I missed like four days. I'll be completely honest. So it kind of <laughs> pissed me off. And this year I was like, dude, like I didn't, as much as I loved riding a bike every single day last year or 361 days of the year, um, I found out something about that was, I found out a hole that I didn't like about that whole setup. I was like, Oh, this, this part stressed me out. And it was one thing. And that was the fact that I had to ride every day. That part I didn't like, but I was so far into the, like the, the thing or the, the goal that I was like, I can't undo this. Right. Uh, so by the time December came and I was like, thank God, like it's over. But this year I did something different and I called it active every day. And now Ooh. I can do Ooh. a bike, a surfboard, a skateboard. Uh, you know, I can go rock climbing. I can go do whatever I want. Like yesterday, I was mountain biking and I went wake surfing. Like that now is something I look forward to doing every single day. And this is not the workout, guys. Like I'm talking about active. I don't think being in a gym is being active. Like unless, I mean, it's mostly just weight training. Like that's not really active. Um, active is the stuff that brings you the endurance, right? It's Chris playing basketball. It's, you know, me doing the things that I like to do. But it removes you for a lot of time and you, you can perform for a very long period of time. That's what activity really is. And so that's what I aim to do every single day this year. I haven't missed a single day that I haven't missed a single, single day.
Wow. And I've started on January 1st being active every single day, every single day, man. Like, I don't care if it's raining, cold, 100 degrees, don't care. I was, I was riding yesterday for an hour and 100 degrees under tree cover, but yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> that, was, that was a great Love place it, man. to wrap it up. Um, guys, thank you so much. Everyone follow uh, Chris on Instagram and YouTube. The links are below. Follow both channels and make sure to stay active. Let's all get to a point where we can enjoy uh, movement together. Chris, any final words? Um, yeah, pursue the fitness first. Chase the money later. That's it. <laughs>